All right, all right. Everybody, just calm down. I've been getting a ton of requests to review episode three of Euphoria, and I finally sat down and watched it, and woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, there's a lot to unpack from this episode. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics from movies, TV shows, the YouTube community, and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. And some things that I'm extremely, extremely passionate about are mental health as well as addiction recovery. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you haven't met me yet, hi, I'm Chris. I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Just a couple weeks ago, I celebrated seven years clean and sober, much like uh, Zendaya's character, Rue, my substance of choice was prescription painkillers as well, all right? So not only have I been sober for about seven years, I also worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center where we specialize in mental health as well. I'm also a sober coach and I'm also an author. So if you didn't get the memo, my brand new book, Rewire Your Anxiety, is out now. So make sure you check out the description as well as the pinned comment below. The ebook's out, the audio book's out. It's not like a huge book either. The audio book I think clocked in at about two hours or so, something like that. So if you're somebody who drives around or you got a bus ride that you go on, boom, just listen to it. Or you can do the ebook on your phone or tablet or whatever you got. All right, so anyways, yeah, let's talk about episode three of Euphoria. Um, I've been focusing on Zendaya's character, Rue. If you guys want me to do other character breakdowns, let me know down in the comments below. Like there's a lot going on with Kat, obviously. And it, it seems like Euphoria is kind of taking the route um, of 13 Reasons Why a little bit, where each episode they kind of like focus more on a specific character and each one's kind of going through their own things. So if you want me to do any other character breakdowns, let me know down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, yeah, Rue, let's talk about this. So one of the first things obviously is that she lies about her clean time. So the first time we see her in the front <laughs> of a 12-step meeting, and I giggle about that because not all meetings are like this, like rarely any meetings are like this. But anyways, she's lying about her clean time because she just did fentanyl in the last episode, right? But she has been clean for about two weeks, but it's common for people to lie about their clean time. We call that taking a dirty chip, all right? And the next thing I wanna talk about is when she was laying in bed with Jules and Jules was just saying like how she doesn't, you know, want Rue to relapse or use drugs anymore because she's been through her own, own stuff. Like she's been through enough of that. Now, something what's interesting, and you might be able to relate to this, is that it's it's not usually a coincidence that people who have been through things are attracted or drawn to people who are currently addicted to drugs or just have a messed up life or whatever it is. Sometimes it's this savior behavior, right? So like from my experience, I had an alcoholic mom. She's been sober for almost 14 years now. But growing up, my mom was an alcoholic until I was 20 years old. And a common thing that I would do was date women who needed, you know, quote unquote, saving. And the psychology behind that is, since we couldn't save this person in our life, maybe we could save that person. So although Jules is saying, like she doesn't wanna have to worry about Rue and all these other things, and she's gonna have to draw this boundary and cut Rue out of her life, sometimes, like unless we get our own therapy and figure out our own stuff, we're going to keep being drawn to those people. If you can relate to that, let me know down in the comments below. And if you've been able to break away from that, let me know how you did that down in the comments. So in this scene right here where Rue's talking again at the meeting, like something that you know a lot of us in recovery have to deal with is getting clean for other people versus getting clean for ourselves. And something that I just cannot express enough is other people's love for us is never enough to keep us sober, right? Like I didn't get clean and sober until my son was three years old. If other people's love could save me, I would have been saved a long time ago. But here's the thing, like a lot of people in 12-step meetings, um, even in the rehab I worked at, they, they would say like, you have to get sober for yourself. You have to get sober for yourself. And this is very true. But in the beginning especially, like it is 
get sober for whoever keeps you sober that day. Because here's what I struggled with. In early recovery, I was struggling with extreme depression and I thought daily about ending my own life because I didn't have substances anymore, right? So when people would say, you have to stay clean for yourself, I'm like, well, I don't like myself. I hate myself. So why would I stay sober for myself? So in early recovery, like my biggest suggestion to anybody out there, like what helped me was every single day I had to find new motivation to stay sober. Like some days I was staying sober for my son. Some days I was staying sober for my family. Some days I was staying sober for the people in my life who I met in recovery because not only were they helping me stay clean, but in turn I was helping them stay clean. So it took a while, but throughout this recovery journey and when I started putting in the work, which we're gonna talk a lot about in a second, I started to learn how to love myself. And today, today, but this has been years now, I started wanting to stay clean for myself. I started waking up each day excited for the day. Like, I stay clean because I want to stay clean, regardless of anybody else. Like, something I was taught was, one of the things about staying clean for other people is we never know what's gonna happen with other people. For example, I've seen people come into treatment for their wife, right? And then they get out of treatment and their wife leaves them and then they relapse. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it is not really a good idea to always just stay clean for other people. Like the last thing I'll say on that, something I was taught a long time ago, was we join what's called the no matter what club. We stay clean no matter what. Like job or no job, wife or no wife, whatever it is, we stay clean no matter what. So then there was a scene where Rue relapsed. She went to the bathroom at Jules' house and she found you know, some pills and she ended up snagging some. And like, as a recovering pill, pill addict, I can tell you like, hoo, 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 that that is so true. Whenever I was at anybody's house, I was always like checking their pills and everything like that. But what I want people to take away from this scene was like, Rue didn't have a program. You know what I mean? Like she wasn't actively looking on her recovery, working on her recovery. So the second these drugs were in front of her face, like she had no defense. You see what I mean? And like, What's important to realize too, at this point in the episode, things were fine, okay? Because later in the episode, she tries to use the excuse that, you know, everything's screwed up so she needs to get high. But when she took the pills from Jules' house, everything was fine. Then she leaves that and she ends up going to a meeting. And here's the thing. So like when I was working in treatment, like we had rules, like there's rules in treatment. Number one rule, don't bring drugs into treatment, but what any, anyways, there were other rules like not to have your cell phone in groups and things like that. And like the clients would always like, you know, sneak their cell phones in their pockets and everything. But the problem with us drug addicts and al alcoholics is like, once we start off small, we, we just make it bigger and bigger when it comes to our lies, right? So we lie about something tiny, like maybe you're lying about your clean time. Then it's easier to relapse because you are already lying about your clean time. You see what I mean? So that's why one of the foundations of staying clean and sober is honesty. Like we just have to start being honest. Like something I heard a long time ago, which is very true for many of us in recovery is, we're only as sick as our secrets, right? And here's the thing, you don't have to dance with everybody. Like if you do not feel comfortable telling an entire group of people everything that you've done or you're going through, like find one, one person. You don't gotta dance with everybody, you gotta dance with somebody. But, but then came out my dude Ali, all right? So after she leaves that meeting, that dude Ali calls her out and he seems like he's got some time and everything like that and he, he starts getting up in her head. And that is one of the reasons why you go to meetings. We need other drug addicts and alcoholics to call us out on our crap. And the reason why it's so much more beneficial, like I remember when like doctors, or some of you, it might've been therapists, when they're trying to tell us about us, right? And what we've done and all these things and who we've hurt. Like, we're like, you don't understand. You haven't been through what I've been through. You don't know what it's like to need this thing, right? But when another drug addict or alcoholic in recovery is talking to you, hoo hoo hoo, has some depth and weight. And like, as soon as I saw him like dropping some truth on her, I was like, dude, I hope she gets this guy as a sponsor. Now, something I will say really quick, real quick, is typically, men stick with men, women stick with women, okay? There are some, different times where it's all right to have a male sponsor if you're a female or a, a, a female sponsor if you're a male, but it's not suggested because 
usually early in recovery, like there's a lot of sexual feelings and we're just trying to find somebody to get our rocks off. So people like try to make an excuse like, oh, I just want, I just want that hot chick to be my sponsor because she seems like she has some good recovery. And it's like, nah, man, your motives are screwed up, right? But anyways, if you want me to do a more in-depth video on that, let me know down in the comments below. So anyways, the most powerful scene in this episode was when Zendaya's character Rue went to Fez to go get some drugs after you know she she had that uncomfortable conversation with Jules and that's part of what recovery is about is talking about your feelings and going through these things right but then she you know kissed Jules and she freaked out she left and she went to Fez to go get drugs and she's banging on the door and Fez said no he's like I'm not gonna help you kill yourself anymore and that's when Rue snapped and I could I could feel it like it reminded me so much of myself right like when we're fiending, when we want the drugs, we will say the most terrible, awful things to get what we want. And like Rue is sitting there screaming at Fez, saying that she's gonna hate him until the day she dies. And then she starts blaming him for it. And thank God Fez stood his ground and set that boundary, right? Because I can relate to that so much. When I got sober seven years ago, and my family was having an intervention. Like, it is just, I, I still get chills just thinking about it because it was just such an awful but great day too because it's what led to my sobriety. But my family was there and the whole time I was screaming at my mom. I was screaming at my mom in front of my dad and my cousins and I think like my aunt was there too. And I was yelling at her, I'm like, this is your fault. You're the reason I'm this way, right? Like, if you hadn't been an alcoholic for most of my life, I wouldn't have become screwed up. And now you want to, now you want me to get better, even though you're the one who caused this, right? And I'm blaming it all on her, right? And here's something that all of us have to figure out. And like, I don't care if you're an addict trying to get clean or stay clean or whatever it is. Like this is for everybody and our mental health as we move forward and let go of the past. Like, although something in our past might have contributed to the way we are today, we can't keep using that as an excuse. Like, who was I, who was I to blame my mother for my addiction when I'm in turn doing the same thing to my son? You see what I mean? Like, we have to start taking responsibility. While somebody might have contributed in the beginning, it is now our responsibility to get better. Like, for example, like my childhood was traumatic, but it's my responsibility to work 12 step programs, to go to therapy, to meditate, to do all these things. That is mine. Nobody has to get better for me. I have to get better. I have to put in the work, all right? But anyways, like, yeah, that was a really, really powerful scene right there. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts about this episode. If there's anything I missed or you want me to dive deeper into or other character breakdowns, let me know down in the comments below. And by the way, don't forget, Rewire Your Anxiety is available now. Go check it out. It is hopefully helping a lot of people. I've had some good reviews so far, but I really, really think there's a lot of practical solutions in there for anybody who struggles with anxiety. If you know somebody who struggles with anxiety, shoot them the link. Say, yo, check this book out. This guy's pretty cool. All right, but that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And all of you wonderful patrons out there, I just put up the links because you all get free copies of Rewire Anxiety. So go check it out. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.